something um, quickly to you from my journal that um, I shared actually just with my family for the first time tonight. Something called, I miss my dad and that's okay. And I hope that it inspires in you some thoughts about folks who have come and gone in your own lives. Uh, and maybe now, at, um, maybe now at Father's Day, there's someone here that can relate in particular to this. I miss my dad and that's okay. My father died when I was 16 after a second bruising round with cancer. He'd beaten it once four years earlier, only to watch it come back in a different place. He died on a Friday night in a big hospital, in a big hospital bed, with me and two of my siblings racing to get there on time. We didn't. There's a debate as old as time about which is more difficult, which is preferred, to lose a loved one suddenly in the instantaneous way, like a, a car accident or a plane crash, or in some other suddenly your life is very different sort of way, where you don't have a chance to say goodbye, or I'm sorry, or I'll see you soon. Or is it easier in the long steps way, where you watch your loved one slowly fade from this life to the next, often in pain, sometimes great pain, sometimes straddling the veil, Sometimes it's a painful goodbye, but it is, if nothing else, a chance to say goodbye. I've had that debate myself, and I never come to any conclusion about which is easier, which hurts less. I only decide in my mind that I had a little bit of both. I knew because he'd had cancer four years earlier that it could return. But on the other hand, on the night he died in the hospital waiting for another scheduled surgery, I'd felt like he'd been taken in an instant. A tragedy, unforeseen, unpredicted, and certainly I was unprepared, and I never saw it coming. Maybe more than anything, I've just decided that what happened, happened. I can't change it, and that's okay. It wouldn't change the fact that I still miss my dad, even now, 20 years later, or that I would still miss him a little bit every single day. It also wouldn't change the fact that with every baby birth, every soccer game, every graduation ceremony, I still close my eyes and wish that he were next to me. And that's okay. My father wasn't a perfect man. He was a terrible golfer. Terrible. Seriously, I think there are still courses where his photo is up in the clubhouse. Not because he broke the course record, but because if he walks in, someone is to call security immediately. <laughs> no, he wasn't perfect. He raised his voice from time to time. He liked to burp the alphabet. He punished me when I felt like I didn't deserve to be punished. And there was advice he gave me that I probably didn't need, and other advice that I did need that he didn't share. Perhaps he didn't think I was ready for it. So he wasn't a perfect man, so what? For me, he was the perfect dad. And there's nothing I wish he'd done any differently, except perhaps linger a little longer on this side. But he didn't. He went when he was called. Of course he did. And that's okay. Some people choose to remember their loved ones who've left this earth through this lens of perfection, where their flaws and faults are edged away, polished by time and scrapbooks, like the rough corners of a block of wood on a sander's belt. You just hold it there just long enough, close your eyes and wait, maybe move it slightly with a little bit of gentle pressure and the rough edges go away. And then what's remembered is that smooth, perfect edge, the edge of a dearly departed loved one's life. I've chosen to remember my dad differently. I do remember the times that I became frustrated, the times he was impatient when we worked on my science fair projects, him teaching me to drive, the times he banged his thumb, his knee, his elbow, and used words that made my mom shout, Willard, from across the house. I remember him imperfectly because it gives me hope. I don't have to be the perfect dad to my kids. I just have to be the perfect dad for them. And I smile when I think of the spot of ground that is my father's final resting place. It is like most others, a marker on the surface of the earth that says, here they are, here's their name, here are the dates that mattered, the day they punched in, the day they punched out. Sometimes some of us spend time at that place, 
Mourning, remembering, talking, leaving flowers, notes, or pebbles. When my dad died, I didn't go for quite some time. Only when a family friend finally convinced me it was time to go and offered to go along. And I remember vividly how we kicked snow off markers until we found my dad's. And honestly, I wish I'd gone a lot sooner. And I've beaten myself up about it through the years. But I didn't. And that's okay. Sometimes people visit the cemetery often, every day, every week, once a month, once a year, on the anniversary of their birth or their death or on the anniversary of their anniversary. And sometimes I have looked at those people and thought, oh, that's too much. It's too often. It's unhealthy. They should move on. But who are we to judge? If sitting in a patch of grass next to a marker on the ground or some granite tombstone six feet above the memories of a loved one, brings them comfort and peace, then isn't that okay? And some never go back. There are members of my family who haven't been to my dad's grave for years, despite living much closer than I do. They remember him in other ways. And they say they know he's not really there anyway. Instead, he's doing some sort of important work on the other side. And that is how they find peace and comfort. And what could be more okay than that. So yes, I do miss my dad. And more than anything in the years since my dad said goodbye, I've learned that there is no right way or wrong way to grieve. There is only your way, and there is my way. It's been more than 22 years since my father died. 22 Christmases, 22 birthdays, and 22 Father's Days. And of course, countless rounds of bad golf never played. But after 22 years, I'm no longer afraid to admit that I still miss my dad. And well, that's okay. I wrote that, I've been writing that in my head for a couple of months and finally decided to, um, to put it on paper. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit later tonight about why, um, why I think this matters so much to me and how my dad has been so instrumental uh, in getting me to this spot tonight. Thank you. 